I listen to music. I listen to a lot of music. So much so that you could call me pan listening. I've been curating a collection of legally downloaded mp3s for like five years now and I've got a ton of songs on there. If you've seen my Omega Strikers montages, you know that I've got a music taste that goes all over the place, so I wanted to talk about it in no particular order. First of all, Cosmo Sheldrake. Every single one of this man's songs could be something out of a world of fae, forests, and fairy tales. He's got a very distinct sound, and one of my favorites from him is The Moss. The song is packed full of your favorite tales, topped with a very catchy tune, and backed by just enough instruments to emphasize the beats. And don't get me started on how the backing vocals come in at just the right times. The Moss is some of Cosmo's best work, and if you're gonna dive into his portfolio, I'd suggest Does the Swallow Dream of Flying and Birthday Suit. Okay, how about something a little more grounded? Tally Hall. Admittedly, I didn't hear about Tally Hall when they were still active, but wow, they've got some real bangers. And the song I'm bringing up here is Good Day. It should be obvious why I love this. With a heavy focus on vocals as well as a few shifts in tone, this is one I've been listening to for a long time. The way it breaks from its consistent step-by-step -step beats into a more homey feel or even the end part is just so good. If you want to check out Tally Hall, I'd suggest Turn the Lights Off in Murderers. Yes, it is a Tally Hall song, I'm pretty sure. But let's swap it up a little. That Handsome Devil makes so many good songs, and while I'd really suggest Viva Discorda, is that how you say it? And A Drink to Death, we'll be talking about the big one, Charlie's Inferno. The concept is that Charlie died, was rejected from heaven, and now he's in hell. I think what really does it for me is how vivid of a picture the song paints. Every, excuse me sir, just feels so right. And don't even get me started with the, I don't want to die. That's barely audible if you're listening for it at the very end. And for some reason the bum 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 bums that the backing vocals provide just give me a scene of white picket fences representing Charlie's now over life. So let's move from a guy who just died to reminding you that you'll die, Will Wood. Or more specifically, Memento Mori, the most important thing in the world. The last song on the normal album, which is Will Wood's best album, Fight Me, is specifically about death. And you might have figured that out because, well, Memento Mori means remember you must die. But instead of a depressing, everything you know and love will die, it's more of a, we're all gonna die, nothing matters, do what you wanna do. It's a brilliant rebuttal to that classic existentialism, and I love the emphasis the song puts on Will's piano playing. It's almost relaxing, like talking to a friend over the fact that you will both die. That is, until the music swells. It's as if there's a kick line as Will tells you, So if you only have one chance, you ought to try to live as best as you like. One day you're going to die. If this was enough for you to say, Well, I'd suggest that song and uh, Nobody, which hasn't been officially released and I'm only playing a clip, please don't take the video down. <laughs> so, those are the four songs. What connects The Moss, Good Day, Charlie's Inferno, and Memento Mori together? And I'd assume if you haven't gotten it right yet, you won't get it right, because the answer is one man. No, not Johnny Cash. Well, almost. We're talking about Chani Jash. He's a bit of a musician on YouTube. He's published his own stuff like Fine, I'm Fine and End the Dance, which are both bangers, by the way, but original songs have nothing to do with the aforementioned. Most of Jash's fame comes from his covers, and I suppose we'll use the word cover for now. Let's pick an early one and see what's up. How about um, The Moss by Cosmo Sheldrake? First of all, this version is significantly more synthy or techno, and I don't know what words real music people use. Um, it's almost lost all traces of its fantasy feeling, as if the world itself has crushed the passion found in those tales. But it's not just the instrumentals. 
Josh adds more, recontextualizing the entire song. With a new verse and an edited chorus, the Moss changes from appreciating the mystical nature of fairy tales to realizing that our society crushes that whimsy. And no matter if you agree with that statement or not, Josh's cover is way more than just a cover. And he's willing to do more than just that. If we go to another cover, posted about seven months later, I'd like to say hello and welcome you, good day, that is my name. Good day. Or, as he puts it, bad day. I don't know if he was inspired by Smo Yoho's series of major to minor songs, but that's what he's done to Good Day. Not only has the music changed, but the entire song is minor edits to place the emphasis on the singer. The biggest change comes with the glass eye parts. The first time the lyrics aren't even edited, letting the music carry this feeling of dread. The second time, however, is a full feeling of someone spiraling, almost reminiscent of Sifrin. Haha, <laughs> Sifrin reference. Okay, it might look like everything Chani Jash does is negative, but that's not exactly right. A lot of his earlier stuff was leaning towards negativity, but he's capable of more. If we hop another six months forward, we can find some interesting things going on in Chani's Inferno. Uh, this cover, if you're willing to call it a cover, completely flips the original on its head. Instead of the start focusing on how good of a person Charlie was, Chani is listing his shortcomings. Charlie was disappointed when he was rejected from heaven, while Chani's rejection was expected. Instead of believing there was a mistake, Chani's even trying to make a deal to get in. But I think the most interesting part is how hell is portrayed. Charlie's hell is horrifying, while Chani's hell has people hanging out, playing poker. And we even flipped the script from Charlie's begging, believing that there's some sort of mistake, to a demon asking Chani if he wanted a snack or beverage. It's on the house. And what about that last, I don't want to die? Charlie's are hidden behind the rest of the vocals. It's obvious that Charlie wouldn't want to be in hell. It's obvious, so there's no reason to highlight it. But Chani's begging is center stage. Even while a demon is trying to cater to him, he still just doesn't want to die. I'm also going to um, ignore the references to other songs, but know that Chani covered four other That Handsome Devil songs, and that's where the other lyrics are from. So yeah, obviously Chani has the ability to create such interesting takes with his ability to edit lyrics, but what if he doesn't? No lyric changes, just covering the song. Let's talk about the most important thing in the world, Memento Mori. And oh boy, where do I start? Uh, how about the sound? Instead of keeping it relaxed and personal, I feel like we've got a whole band playing. It's bold and loud, almost to a point of drowning out the vocals. Even at the piano's solo, Jash's version uses both piano and synth. How about the visuals? The original song doesn't come with any, so Jash is free to do whatever he feels. And what do we get? Plenty of comedic shots combined with other beautiful pieces contributed by other artists, highlighting how silly existence is. I could also get into the vocal differences or how the tempo sways through the song, but I don't think I have the correct words to get into it. After all, I only took choir for like eight years. I can sing, but do not ask me to read sheet music or use real music terms. Anyway, the point of all this is to highlight Chani Jash. He's an amazing artist and I cannot wait to see more from him. No matter what they do, it's always interesting. Links to all the songs and channels are in the description, check them out, and boom, done with the video. I'd like to say it was easier than the last one, but talking about music was weirdly difficult. Like what do I even put up on screen? Oh, and uh, if you enjoyed, subscribe, leave a comment, I'm always looking for new music recommendations. And, uh, oh, did you hear there's a new Pan Singing album coming out? Uh, it's, it's the left one on the screen. Uh, anyways, I'm out.